How does the best draft prospect of 2020 have the worst shooting form? Ball facts coming back at you again. Facts. Jello, ball facts. Jello might get buckets in that game. And we gonna give you the facts. And that's facts. When we look at the 2020 draft, what do we see? We see some, oh, we see some guys who can dunk. We see some guys who can shoot. We see guys who can do a lot of things. We see different positions. And to me, it looks like a good draft class. Now, there are some people who say it's the weakest draft class they've seen in a while. I do not agree with that. But one thing that most people can agree on is the fundamentals of basketball. You know, when you get to a certain level, like the NBA, the highest heights, there is a unanimous consensus on the way that you play the game. And that's just what it is. They expect you to be able to dribble this kind of way shoot this kind of way lay up this kind of way it's just what they expect but there's someone in the draft who does not meet those expectations yet he's higher than the rest of them how could this be and though he's known for his three-point shooting he actually doesn't have a high percentage 25 so we got to go back to the beginning to see how you can have a low shot percentage but a high ranking right here Whoa, did you see the way that LaMelo shot that? Now, this is this is kind of funny, guys. Bear with me. Look at how he's heaving and throwing that. Oh, my gosh. Most, most coaches would be infuriated with those shot selections when you shoot like that. But that's LaMelo creating a shooting form that would help him heave the ball to get it to the rim. He was so little playing up. Okay, we got a pass now. Who's that, Andre? I think so. Of course, Jello the sniper. Cash. We knew that. Look at that. Wait, he's limping. He was limping back then. Oh, my gosh. Lonzo. Wow, he actually has the same handles back then as he does now. No cap. There we go. Cash finally start dropping. Lonzo with the left side shot that he used to have. Lamelo again. He just pulling over tall defenders. Typically, kids this age can't even shoot three-pointers, but he was determined to take the same shots as his brothers, and LeVar was like, keep on shooting until you make it. If we're down by 20, and we're still pressing, and we're down by 20, guess what? We're going to play the same way. They out of bullets now. We didn't shot our worst half. Now we're going to shoot our best just because the percentage is going to catch up. We done missed, if, missed 50 shots. Now we're going to make 50. If you had a coach that said that to you, how would you feel about shooting? You wouldn't be that stressed about it. You've been working on it in the backyard on the shooting machines day in and day out. You know, okay, it's got to fall at some point. So you have the confidence of a monster because the coach, who is your dad, is telling you just keep shooting. You can always break it down to the percentages and all that. Uh, some games you shoot good, but it'll catch up with you. Some games you shoot bad. But if you worry about the percentage, whether you're going to take that shot or not, that's the confidence you got to have. Because when a shot goes up, two things going to happen. Either you're going to be the zero or the hero. And if you know how to handle that, you're fine. Now, he would look dumb if he missed this shot. But he made it. And LeVar's green light coaching has given him the confidence to take that risk. I've, I've seen him at his best. So, however a coach really believes in my son, that's when the whole world's going to get to see it from a different eye. Like, wow, Mellows. I've been watching him play like this, so nothing surprises me. There are so many people out there that think, why is LaMelo Ball ranked so high when his fundamentals look so low? And they don't get that he's been doing this for a long time, longer than the pick that you like. He's been training with this shot. Melo was like five, Alonzo was eight, and Jello was seven. Okay. We're going down there, she's at a middle school. And they were like, oh, Miss Ball, those are your boys. And then we will place their best eighth grade team on the court. And we was killing them. And, and you know, Melo make a basket, yeah, little yeah, he is. Yeah. It ain't the same. It's like, yeah, oh, you made it. I know he can yeah, throw it up yeah, that yeah. high. So after we finished playing, the kids already like, they're going to be so good. And they wanted their autographs, so they just crowded them. Melo couldn't even really write. He was just putting the X on people's <laughs> back. There's something special about this kid. And you guys are, I've been knowing it since he's been a baby. And so now you guys are getting to see it. And the proof is in the pudding. Scouts are actually starting to see what LeVar's saying, but he's trying to let them know, look at the keys to success and keep it going. You be in a rhythm and the coach says, okay, sit down for these next four minutes. And then you get out of that rhythm. What LeVar is trying to tell them is he's like, look, when they gave LaMelo Ball the keys at, in the NBL, when Aaron Brooks left, look what he started doing. Yes, his percentage was 25%, but he started getting buckets. If you give this guy some teammates, you're going to win. And that's what LeVar is trying to tell these NBA coaches. Let him shoot. He's going to miss some, but then he's going to make some, and it's going to balance out. LaMelo is going to be a high draft pick despite his awkward shot because 
the LeVar coaching style allows you to miss shots but still win the game. And that's how LaMelo's game has been set up. But nobody's had the success of Melo on the fact that you're not set up like that. He's had the perfect childhood, the perfect childhood. LeVar was that type of father who would never say you're too small. Just imagine having a father and he, he's never going to say, yeah, you're too little to take that shot. All he can do is say encouragement, keep on shooting. Then you don't miss five shots. You look over at the bench and your dad says, keep on shooting. That type of encouragement. Do you know what that does to a kid when they're hearing that from four years old and up? Come on now. You got this one guy who's shooting 10%, but every time the last day, everybody on their feet like, ooh. Now there's a growing number of people who are thinking that LeBron is better than Michael Jordan because he has like the stats, you know, just better stats in some times. But there's some people that's gonna say, we don't care about the stats, we care about the W. We care about the win. And that is exactly how LeVar has trained his kids to not care about the stats, but only care about the win wins 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 so guys the three reasons the number one guard in the draft has the ugliest shot is because he started shooting further than them earlier than them with bigger competition than the rest of those guys number two he has a personal trainer as a father he had extensive practice on that form growing up i mean who has a shooting machine in their backyard and number three the unmatchable green light to shoot as many jumpers as you could get up in a game which gave him the ultimate confidence because i told my sons this you're gonna bust your ass whether it be in the beginning or the end if you child and playing around having all this fun you're gonna bust your ass to make ends meet or you can run these hills run these lines shoot these jumpers lift these weights work hard doing this training with me and look where you're at